blessed Feast of Tabernacles brethren. We like to thank God for giving us this wonderful feast today being the second day of the feast. I'm sure we're all enjoying it as God has commanded us and we're enjoying even the lessons that we've heard even on the first day and even at the third hour. Ah, we thank God for such a time. Yes, it is a time to celebrate and to properly celebrate with God. Because at times people do celebrate without God because when they check they are, they are sinful, like with, uh, issues like Nebuchadnezzar, uh, 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 sorry, Belshazzar, uh, uh, who celebrated and enjoyed without God, only to find that a hand was there writing on the wall and said, uh, Thou art found what? Wanting. But in this case, we are not in the case to be found wanting. Why? Because we have already enjoyed the blotting out of our sins. Ah, it's a wonderful time, brethren. Let's enjoy the feast and meet the demands as God has set this for us. So I'd like to welcome you into our study today and the lesson that we're covering today is covering, the covering that keeps the bottomless pit open. So that's our topic today. It talks about the covering. There is a covering that God has provided for his people and that covering, instead of covering the bottomless pit, it actually keeps the bottomless pit open. So that is very interesting study that we like to go through uh, if you do not understand and know this, would, uh, would want to hear what uh, Sifa uh, said, which he spoke un unknowingly that he was speaking him a wonderful truth. Let's hear what he said. Uh, that's uh, John chapter 11, verse 49 to 52. Verse 49. Yeah. And one of them, named Hephas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye, no, nothing at all. Right. If you do not know about the covering that keeps the bottomless pit open, according to Cyphers, he says, you know, nothing at all. Meaning, to know the truth or to know what is important in our lives is to know this truth. If you do not know this truth, the question, the, 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 the argument is you don't know anything at all. What was the truth that Cyphers spoke? Uh -huh. No, consider. No, consider that it is expedient for us. Uh -huh. That one man should die for the people, right? And that the whole nation perish. So the, the the special truth that Cyphers put through, which he was he spoke unawares that he was speaking the, the excellent truth, is that it is expected that one man should die for the people than the whole nation to perish. So he spoke wonderful truths here, and God is saying, in this truth that he spoke, it is then that we find the subject of. Uh, the covering that keeps the bottomless pit wide open. Mm. So let's hear uh, what he, he really meant as he spoke this, and it, even scripture testifies that he spoke unknowingly. <laughs> and this spake he. And this spake he not of himself. Right. But being high priest that year, uh -huh. he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. So what was Cyphus, Cyphus giving here? A prophecy of the death of what? Of Christ. As we shall see, it is this death of Christ that opened the bottomless pit. And when it opened the bottomless pit, it, the, the bottomless pit must be kept open for the people of God to be saved. Eh? So let's move on to see what you prophesied did he say, eh? and not for that nation only. And not for that nation only, right? but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. So his truth wasn't just limited to the Jewish nation when he spoke this. Mm. It was actually going direct to the whole world. Why? Because we are seeing that the whole world uh, could only survive if one man had died. If that one man had not died, then the world would not be saved. It will also perish together with everyone, even of uh, the nation to which Cyphus was referring to. Mm -hmm. Now, let's just hear some interesting uh, points there in Tisafages 540 paragraph 2. In declaring that, uh -huh. in declaring that one man should die for the nation, right? Cyphus indicated that he had some knowledge of the prophecies, uh -huh. although it was very limited. Right. But John, in his account of this scene, takes up the prophecy uh -huh. and shows its broad and deep significance. Right. So the prophecy of Caiaphas has got a broad and a deep word significance. significance. Mm -hmm. and now we'll go on, uh, but uh, for now, I want you to go to CTR 269.5, which says, on the lips, uh, so, uh, these words were uttered by one who knew not 
these words were uttered by one who knew not their significance. Right. So when Carvers spoke these words, he knew not the significance of these words. Yeah? Mm. Right. Let's go ahead. He was he was condemning one whose death would end the need for types and shadows. Right. Whose death was prefigured in every sacrifice made. Uh-huh. But the high priest's words meant more than he. Right. Or those who were combined with him. Uh-huh. By them he bore testimony that the time had come for the ironic priesthood to cease for So him. he was actually, when he was saying it's better for one man to die, he was actually ending the ironic priesthood. Uh-huh. And the Holy Spirit chose him to speak that because he was the high priest. He was supposed to hand over the activities of the priesthood into that priesthood of what of Christ, which was to keep open the bottomless what pit, as we shall see. So that was an excellent truth. If you don't know this truth, that it is better for one man to die than for the whole nation to perish, then you know nothing at all. So it says here, uh, let's go down. Uh, this is a, a everlasting covenant or Evico 504.1, which says. Um, the high priest thought of, of nothing more than... Eh? The high priest thought of nothing more than that by sacrificing Jesus, they would save the people from destruction by the Romans. Yeah, so that's what he was thinking. He just thought that the destruction here, which will happen, there, because when you read through the prophecy in Desarvish, you find that they were saying Christ is gaining popularity, and if he gains popularity, it means people will revolt against them, and then it will end up causing... Uh, the, 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 the Roman Empire by then to, to attack them. But we find out that his imagination was just limited. He thought it was the destruction by the what? By the Romans. Uh-huh. But God. But God used his mouth for a prophet that the death of Jesus should indeed uh-huh. save the people from perishing. Right. And save not only the Jewish nation, uh-huh. but all the children of God scattered abroad. Do you see that, brethren? So that death of Christ, which he then did was not only just to save the Jewish nation, mm. it was going to save the whole world, all those who will come to that sacrifice. So this is the truth that he altered. Mm. They did not agree that Jesus was the, was the saint of God, but he altered that he was the saint of God, unknowingly and unwillingly. Yeah? So this is how it is when you try to fight the things of God. You hear some people say, don't listen to them. Don't listen to this. They don't know that by so doing, they are making people to actually listen and people to find out why are we taught not to listen to these truths. Mm. And in so doing, they are working for God. <laughs> what does it say? This yeah? he does by saving his people from their sins. Right. For in him we have redemption through his blood, uh-huh. even the forgiveness of God, sins. Today we are enjoying the Feast of Tabernacles. Why? Because of this statement that was uttered by, 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 by uh, Caiaphas and fulfilled also by Christ, that he died for us and through his death and through the partaking of his life, of, of the life-giving emblems, we are now able to receive or we have received the forgiveness of sins. Yes, we have a duty to, what, to enjoy uh, this feast of, of Tabernacles, right? But the words of Cyphers, this is the PTQ, PTUK, February 4, 1897. But the words of the high priest Cyphers uh-huh. are particularly remarkable right. in that he... Being a wicked man uh-huh. and the two of the Roman power, right. while advising uh-huh. with cold blooded cruelty uh-huh. the death of Christ, at the same time, uh-huh. unconsciously state the mission upon which he came to the world right. to die for the people uh-huh. and prophesize its, its success in, in <laughs> gathering from all nations of the children <laughs> of God. This is so wonderful, brethren, when you think about it. This guy was Carver, as we are talking about, he was a wicked man, yeah. a tool under the power which then ruled so that they were what they, they, they would kill even what Christ. He was even a cold blooded cruel man who was plotting the death of Christ. Yeah. But while he was in the midst of all this evil which he was, but because you held the post of the high priest and you were supposed to hand over uh, the ministration of the earthly priest to that of what of Christ. We see that the Holy Ghost used him, unwilling, uh, uh, unwilling as he was. Mm-hmm. He spoke the truth, and not only spoke the truth, but he spoke also of the success of the work of Christ in saving what people. Mm-hmm. What an honor it is to serve God. Yeah. You can't fight God. That's why the scripture says, if God is for us, 
who can be against us. Mm-hmm. So even if the wicked speak back like against the message, they don't know that they're actually causing the message to grow. So this is what happened, and this is the truth that he uttered, the truth which is means our salvation. Mm-hmm. How manifestly hear the wrath of man? Uh-huh. How manifestly hear the wrath of man is made to praise God. Right. So when man is angry and praise him, mm-hmm. I'm against God, I'm against the truth, God tends that to praise him. Mm-hmm. Here is Caiaphas, who wanted to kill Christ, but he uttered a prophecy that showed Christ that his ministry was going to be a success. Mm-hmm. So as the wicked battle and try to fight us, they actually show us that our mission will be a success. So, yes, today we are celebrating the Feast of what? Tabernacles. Amen. Otherwise, we couldn't be able to enjoy this Feast of Tabernacles if it were not that Christ fulfilled the words that Calf has spoke. <clears throat> the words that Christ would die for the world mm-hmm. rather than for the world to perish. Just one man. That's why I said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Eh? Mm-hmm. One man must die for the world. Eh? That's the prophecy then. This year in PP 542, about that, PP 542. The people of Israel praised God at the Feast of Tabernacles uh-huh. as they called to mind his mess in their deliverance from the border of Egypt right. and his tender care for them during their pilgrim life in the wilderness. Right. Uh-huh. They rejoiced also in the consciousness of pardon and acceptance through the service of the Day of Atonement. So this is end. what it means when you have really understood our lesson today which we are talking about. That when the children of Israel were oh, celebrating this Feast of Tabernacles as we are doing today, they had a conscious pattern of acceptance. They have a conscious uh, pattern about acceptance. Uh, sorry, rather they rejoice also in conscious of pattern and acceptance through the Day of, of Atonement. So this is what God expects us today as we are enjoying this that we really know that he has accepted us. Yeah? He has patterned us. Therefore, he has made the bottomless pit open for the devil, as we shall see why the bottomless pit should be open. So this is how the Feast of Tabernacles is, is being celebrated. Uh, think about this, uh-huh. but... But when the ransom of the Lord shall have been safely gathered into the heavenly canon, right. forever delivered from the bondage of the curse, uh-huh. under which the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together, right. and uh-huh. now they will rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Mm. Christ's great work of atonement for men will then have been completed, uh-huh. and their sins will have been forever blotted out. So you don't even know how much joy awaits us in the final Feast of Tabernacles, eh? when we shall actually, well, by, by celebrating that we are doing today, we are typifying what we shall do when sin shall have been completely eradicated. We know we are in the period where God is eradicating sin in the house of Israel, like we learned even on the day of atonement. Mm-hmm. So we see that this is what makes us to have joy in this word feast. Amen. Because just imagine that it was this uh, in the 10th day of the seventh month that even the trumpet of the Jubilee was sounded. Mm-hmm. Someone who would have been a slave for several years knew that the time would have come for me to be made free. You can see how much people waited for the Day of Atonement and then they will have how much joy they will have in the Feast of Tabernacles when they were delivered from being a slave. Because, you know, after the the, 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 the period would require that the land be given back to the owner and even also the aspect that the slave, if it was an house of Israel slave, he must be retained and given his what is freedom. So this is what it is with sin. It has bound us tight and close in this world. Uh, in this bottomless pit, which we shall see. And he has made, and he has worked and ensured that we are tied in this bottomless pit. It is closed, we are closed in it, so that we don't get out of it. But thanks to God, who through the work that Abel Pilate outed, uh, uh, Cyphus outed, that uh, one man should die for the world, Christ has opened the bottomless pit. Mm. And he has made it possible for me and you to escape. Amen. So, why then should we not celebrate this in the Feast of Tabernacles? Why? The scripture says we have to be conscious, to be conscious of this pattern and even our acceptance. Because we really know that we are it not for the Day of Atonement. We are not for those services. The bottomless pit will be shut. Mm. So the bottomless pit must be opened so that the people of God might escape from it. Because the devil's way is to shut us in so that 
we die with him in the bottomless one pit. Now, let's go further now to really understand more than about this bottomless pit that we keep referring to. Eh? Now, let's go to Revelation chapter in the words of Revelation. Our Revelation also pictured this subject that Pilot was talking, Cyphus was talking about. So let us see, uh, let us see and understand it, how it was laid down. Eh? Uh, Revelation chapter 9, verse 1, right? Verse 1. And the fifth angel sounded, mm -hmm. and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. Uh -huh. And to him was given the key of the bottom. So that's where the subject now comes in the interesting part. What then John is seeing here uh, in the subject of the trumpets, he is beholding a star coming from heaven, eh? fall from heaven to the earth. And when this star came down, he was given the key of the bottomless what pit. So that means. When we are here on earth, we really need to understand the key. We really need to understand the bottomless pit so that we know what keeps that bottomless pit open. Now, let's hear more about that. <laughs> Just as it did. Just as. Yes, sorry, this is tract uh, 5, page 59, paragraph 2 and 3. Uh -huh. Just as did the star of the third trumpet. Right. So this fifth trumpet star descended from heaven to earth. Uh -huh. And as the third trumpet star has been conclusively identified as representing the advent of the Bible, uh -huh. then this latter one, since it is similar to the former, must stand for something the equivalent of it. So when you read uh, about the trumpets, which we know they, 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 they began to be sounded, uh, uh, for, for starting from the first judgment that fell upon the world, which was the Noatic uh, phase, where there was seen a mountain, uh, uh, so where it was seen the destruction of what of the of the antediluvian world, and then from then we have also the Oxotas, just prior to the Oxotas movement, we also have the 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 the, the, the aspect of the of, of the advent of the Bible represented by a star. So when you understand this aspect of the Bible represented by a star, then it also makes sense that when you also find the trumpets, we are talking about the star, then. This needs to be something that is equivalent to the star. Yeah? Something that is equivalent to the Bible. That came to the earth and that was given what the key of the bottomless pit. Uh -huh. The Bible. The Bible and Christ being complementary affinities. Right. Each the word of God. Uh -huh. Then the fact that the descent of the first star is symbolic of the advent of the Bible. Right. Compels the conclusion that the descent of the second star is symbolic of the first advent of Christ. Right. Uh -huh. Moreover, the star is personif personified as him, mm -hmm. masculine in gender, right. thus being limited to a male person. Uh -huh. And finally, Christ himself gives that. Uh, and finally, Christ himself gives testimony that he is the bright and morning star. Uh -huh. To him, be it remembered was given bottomless, bottomless pit. Right. So uh, uh, I'm sure we understand. He was given the key of the what? Bottomless yes. pit. So we're saying when you read the Bible, yeah, when you read the Bible, use the word of God. It is actually Christ Himself. But here it is Christ in written form. So when Christ came upon this earth, it was the Bible in living or written uh, in living form. So meaning Christ and the Bible, they are said to be a complementary infinities. They've got complementary infinities, meaning they are one and the same. This is what a God expects us even the wave shift to be. So that what is written in the Bible, that's what they live. What the Bible says they should do, that's what they also do. So this is what Christ was. And he therefore is referred to the bright and the morning what star in Revelation. Therefore, when the star that fell from heaven, who bears the name he here in, in, in this prophecy it represents who? Christ. So it was Christ when he came upon this earth that was given the key of the bottomless what? Pit. That he might open it. So when Christ came upon this earth, he found people inside the bottomless pit shut in by the devil. Mm. But heaven gave Christ something. The key of the bottomless pit. Mm. Now, let's move on to understand. Uh -huh. I saw another angel. This represents 20 verse 1 and 2. 
And I saw an angel come down from heaven, mm -hmm. having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Right. And he laid hold on the dragon, uh -huh. that old serpent, uh -huh. which is the devil, right. by Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Right. Right. I'm sure we quickly see what uh, this verse is telling us, that then there is an angel who is seen coming down from heaven, and then he laid hold on the dragon. And shut the truck on in the bottomless what pit. <laughs> so the bottomless pit is synonymous or is where the devil must be shut in. So this same angel, if he was having a key by then, it means that he must have obtained the key sometime then. And who else? Maybe let's just hear a little bit about that one. 50, uh, number 5, page 16. Is Christ. Yeah. As Christ is the one who secures Satan's captivity. Right. Thereby ushering in the millennium, uh -huh. he alone can be fittingly symbolized by the angel. Right. Having the key of the bottomless pit. Uh -huh. And by the star to whom the key was given. Right. And as the key. So I'm sure we get the idea here mm -hmm. that who will secure Christ to the bottom, who will secure the devil into the bottomless pit? It is Christ himself. That's what we have been learning on the service of the Day of Atonement. That's why we are enjoying even the feast today. That it will be then that Christ would carry the sins of the world and then place them upon the scapegoat who is the devil and then secure him for a thousand years in the bottomless what? Pit. So who does all that? It is Christ himself. So because Christ does that, it's clear then that he is the one who has the key of the bottomless pit. Then it indicates that there was a time in which he was given the key of the bottomless pit, which we see in Revelation 9 verse 1. And therefore also it then indicates that it is he that is that star who was given the key of the bottomless pit. So we're moving on with moving on well. That the reason why Christ came here on earth was to keep it. The first thing that God gave to him as he came was the gospel. So man was the key. So when he gave him the key, God knew that the main purpose of coming Christ to this earth was to open the bottomless one, okay. pit. This is why when Caiaphas uttered that truth and said, it is better for, me, for one man to die. He was actually prophesying that Christ must open the bottomless one, pit. Otherwise, if the bottomless pit was not opened, then the whole nation and everyone are going to perish on the bottomless pit. Brethren, I, I, it's, it's not worthy for us to be found perishing in this bottomless pit. Because why? The angel who is Christ has opened the bottomless one pit. Now, let's move on to find out more. Uh -huh. And as the giving of a thing to any certain one must precede the having of it by that one, uh -huh. the verbs given and having, uh, and having point, of course, to different times. Right. Obviously, therefore, Christ received the key at the sounding of the fifth trumpet uh -huh. some time before the millennium. Right. Yes, at the commencement of the millennium, he, he already has it. it. That's clear. So the fifth trumpet, that's where Christ received the key to the bottom of the sword. So that he can, a key is a very small thing, but very important. Right. It can shut. Without a key, you can't shut. It can open. Without a key, you can't open. So Christ has an ability to shut and close the bottomless one pit. Now, Christ's mission to bring deliverance from the prison house of sin. Eh? Christ's mission being to bring deliverance um, from the prison house of sin and of death. Uh -huh. That is the bottomless pit. Right. And to so do did you get what is the bottomless pit? Mm. It is the prison house of sin and death. Mm. And what is that prison house? Mm. It is this earth. So when we say you are bound in the bottomless pit or the bottomless pit is closed, it really means that you are bound in sin and in death of this world, of this earth. Mm. So then the purpose of Christ, his purpose or his outer purpose mm. is to deal with removing or delivering people from this sin and even from this death, which is from this bottomless pit. And instead, shutting the devil there. So, but how is Christ doing that? How did he open this bottomless pit? Uh -huh. To do so through... Uh -huh. And to do so through the preaching of the gospel. Right. The key, uh -huh. therefore, must be figurative of the gospel. Right. The only power that is able to set free those who are imprisoned in the... 
bottomless pit. So those who of the three angels messages or those of the Adventists who say, they are, no, 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 we no longer need the gospel. The gospel was nailed to the cross. <laughs> That's nailing the key to the cross. Because we have been told that what is the key to the bottomless pit? That opens this prison house of sin and death. It is the gospel. And what is the gospel? The gospel is given in precepts in what? In Leviticus. Amen. In the statutes and judgments. So those who reject the message of the gospel, then they have no key and they have no ability to escape from the earth. This is why we see so much evil, so much sin is practiced by those who refuse the message of the gospel, the message of the statutes and judgments. Why? Because they are bound on the earth. They do not have the key that liberates them from where? From the bottomless pit. So brethren, we have the gospel. The gospel is what liberates us from the bottomless what? pit. Since the bottomless pit of Revelation 20 verse 3, is symbolic of the earth as a prisoner right. during the millennium, uh -huh. then the bottomless pit of Revelation 9 verse 1, being identical, must likewise be symbolic of the earth as a prison house at another time. So we learned this truth, uh, we learned this truth as the first cause about why the devil chose to be on this earth when he overcame Adam and Eve. And Therefore, God made this earth to then be a bottomless pit of prison house. For what was it? This is why it says in Peter, the angels that sinned not God did not spare them. What did he do? He held them in this what in this earth and as a prison house. Uh -huh. Let's go ahead or oh, put on the speed. This implicitly biblical interpretation of the star, the key, and the bottomless pit reveals that the earth at Christ's first advent had become a prison house, mm -hmm. a pit right. for God's people that and that Christ came to open it in order to save them. That's quite clear, brethren. If Christ had not come, mm -hmm. then the people of God were to perish in that what? In that pit. Right. Let's continue now so that we can see the, the, the important what aspect which you are talking about. Uh, chapter 5, 61.2 says the very fact that God's people. The very fact that God's people are vested with the power to keep open the bottomless pit, then should they be defeated, uh -huh. the pit would be shut and would become a prison house from which there would be no escape unless it is I don't opened. Know, I, I don't know whether I got that. Mm. The God's people are vested mm. with the power to keep open the bottomless what? Pit. Pit. Mm. So this is why the, our topic was saying, the covering that keeps open the bottomless what? Pit. Pit. Mm. So we that's our duty, brethren, time and again, that we keep open the bottomless pit. As well, agitating this message of the gospel, we are keeping open the bottomless what? Pit. Because that's the key that keeps the bottomless pit open. But if the devil overcomes us, or those who are saying the gospel was nailed to the cross, then they want to shut in the bottomless pit. Once the bottomless pit is shut in, people will perish then. So our duty is to ensure that the bottomless pit is what? is open continuously mm -hmm. so that the people of God may escape from the bottomless pit and enjoy even the Feast of Tabernacles as we are doing today. So let's keep open, brethren, the bottomless pit by preaching the message of the hour. For it is only the message of the hour. The gospel is given by, 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 by God at, at, in every generation that will keep open the bottomless what? pit. Mm -hmm. So do not allow and allow ourselves to be defeated in this task. Otherwise, the bottomless piece closes and the people of God perish then. Right. Uh -huh. So certain in the later days. And so certain in the later days of the Jews, uh -huh. as sacred history records, right. attacked them, uh -huh. took them captive, right. and thus shut the pit. This is what happened. When the Jewish nation at first was given in the days, or should I say in the Israelites were given the message by God, they had been given that power because we say the gospel is given in Leviticus in precepts. It meant that they were given the key to keep the earth open or the bottomless pit open. But as time went on, they lost the key and started to go after the heathen customs. And as a result, what happened? Then the devil thus therefore attacked them and shut in the bottomless pit. So that in the days of Christ, when Christ came in, the bottomless pit was already shut no one was able to go out. No one was able to get in. And this is why it, is, it was saying 
uh, to, 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 to uh, 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 Cypher said, uh, later say that it is better for one man to, uh, to die because he understood that Christ by dying, he will open the bottom of the priest. Though he did not know, but the Spirit of God, that's what the Spirit of God meant, that Christ had to come here on earth and open the prison house, which the devil had shut in by the message of the gospel. Mm -hmm. What an honor, brethren, that Christ did and he has given even to us, right? Let's go ahead. Uh -huh. And knowing that when the Savior should come, he would open it, mm -hmm. the dragon therefore stood ready to devour the child as soon as it was born. Right. But Losing sight of the infant Christ, he incited Herod to slay all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coast thereof from two years old and under. Right. In the hope of making rid of the Savior. Uh -huh. So why did the devil want to destroy the Savior before even he was born? The issue is he knew that the Savior has come to open the bottomless what? Pit. Mm -hmm. So me and you we are in danger. Because we have the ability to keep open the bottomless pit. This is why the devil fights hard, makes people believe that the, the, the gospel message of the feasts, statutes and judgments was nailed to the cross. These things are no longer there so that he knows that the bottomless pit is shut. But alas, because God sends Elijah, for what purpose? To open the bottomless what? pit so that the people of God might escape. What an honor. We have escaped from our sins through the service of the Day of Atonement. That's the opening of the bottomless one pit. Keeping it open. Confessing our sins so that we are not only are we delivered, but even many more can come out from, from, from the bottomless pit. <laughs> right. Can you go down and say um, the Spirit of the Lord? Uh -huh. The Spirit of the Lord, he declared, is upon me uh -huh. because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, mm -hmm. have sent me to heal the heart, the broken hearted, mm -hmm. to preach delivering to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, mm -hmm. to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So, this is what Christ came when he said, eh? mm -hmm. The Lord has sent me to preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of the sight, eh? meaning Christ knew that everyone that was on earth was a captive to the devil. And he came to preach that deliverance, that opening of the bottomless pit, so that the people of God may be pulled out from there. Right, go ahead. And as a result of opening the pit, there came smoke, darkness, and locusts. We know that. Eh? Mm -hmm. After Christ opened the pit, because once the pit is opened, mm -hmm. Christ was supposed to then give it to someone else because he went to heaven. So you are supposed to give that work to other people so that they can keep that bottomless pit what? open. So we learn that when after Christ opened the bottomless pit, what happened? Let's see Revelation 9 verse 2. And he opened the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit and there arose a smoke out of the pit. Mm -hmm. And the smoke of a great furnace right. and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the uh -huh. pit. Go ahead. For the significance of the smoke, we need to look no further than to the ceremonial system, which was a compacted process of the gospel. Right. So when Christ opened the pit, there was what? There was what? There was a smoke. Mm -hmm. Which this smoke was saying it has to do with the work of the gospel. What exactly there? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Exodus of the Apostles, uh, page 14, that we behold the ascending smoke. There we behold the ascending smoke of the ceremonial offerings, uh -huh. which, as we know, prefigured Christ's great sacrifice on behalf of the human race. So do you see what is the smoke that was seen? Prefigures the sacrifice of Christ. So when Christ died, his death eh, opened the bottomless pit. Therefore, this is what we see as when he opened the bottomless pit, we saw the smoke, and it was even seen in the days of Christ that the, 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 the sun was darkened. Let's just hear that one. Uh -huh. Accordingly, the smoke which came from the pit. Accordingly, the smoke which came from the pit is symbolic of Christ's crucifixion. Right. And the darkened sun and air are symbolic of the darkness over the whole land mm -hmm. from the sixth hour until the ninth hour. So we know that when Christ died on the cross, at the hours of prayer, there was what? There was what? Darkness from sixth hour to the ninth hour, and that is symbolical of that smoke which is said, uh, which which we learned that uh, the sun and the moon were darkened by the reason of the what 
sorry, we learned that the smoke, the, 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 the sun was darkened by the reason of the what of the smoke from the furnace. Mm -hmm. So that's what happens. We saw this. There was a darkening of the sun. That was a sign that Christ is opening the bottomless pit. Do you see at what time was the bottomless pit open? At the hours of what? Of prayer. Amen. So the hours of prayer, brethren, they are the ones that keep open the bottomless what? pit. Mm -hmm. When we use them and we talk to God, what is happening? The bottomless pit remains what open. And when we preach the message of the gospel, which is that gospel of the, of the daily, which is that gospel of the kingdom, which is that gospel of even of the states and judgments, what is happening? We are keeping the bottomless pit open. Now, uh -huh. can you go ahead? And, and the darkness covering the land for the period of these three hours shows that at the moment, this is the hour struck, mm -hmm. the pit was open. Right. Uh -huh. This clear sequence of facts show that with the gospel key, that is the good news of salvation through his shed blood, mm -hmm. Christ opened to his captive people the way of deliverance from the prisoners. Right. The bottomless pit of sin and death. So this is so interesting. Eh? We can repeat it time and again. Mm -hmm. But however, we have found it quite, quite clear what really happened, that the bottomless pit was opened at the hours of prayer. And we are saying these hours of prayer, as we use them in reference to the sacrifice of Christ, taking bread and wine, which is enabled us even to partake of the day of atonement, yes, even today to enjoy the Feast of Tabernacles, we are keeping open the bottomless pit. So this is why the devil makes me and you to really not care about the appointed hours of prayer. Yeah? You take, the hour almost gets finished without something ready to, 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 to present themselves before God. The devil knows that those who do that, they will shut, be shut in the bottomless what? pit. So we really need to, to, to work with God in this opening of the bottomless pit. And not, not only opening, but keeping it what? Open. Mm -hmm. So we also just want to get a, 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 a little bit that what happened, when, what came out from the bottomless what? pit. pit. <laughs> Uh, this is Revelation 9, verse 5 and 6. And to them, we know that came out, there was smoke, and they were even locust. Let's just hear a little bit about that. Uh -huh. And to them, it was given that they should not kill them, mm -hmm. but that they should be tormented five months. Mm -hmm. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it. Right. And shall desire to die, and death shall flee from mm -hmm. them. And there came out of the smoke locust upon the earth right and unto them was given power uh -huh. as the scorpions of the earth have power right and it was commanded them that they should not have the grass of the earth uh -huh. neither any green thing neither any tree but only those men which have not the seal of god in their forehead so this is what came out from the bottomless pit when christ opened it the locust mm -hmm. but when the locusts came in they were given power to hate men or hate all those that do not have the seal of, of God. Otherwise, they were given a message to keep open the bottomless what? Yes. pit. So that those who are enjoying in the pit have a way of escaping from the pit. Huh? So why? Because those who don't have the seal of God, it means they are in the pit. So that's why they need attacking so that they are working to this slumber which they are in so that they can come out from the bottomless pit. Now, uh, with the smoke symbolizing the crucifixion, with the smoke symbolizing the crucifixion and the locust coming out of the smoke, the only admissible conclusion is that they are symbolical of the Christians mm -hmm. who came as a consequence of the sacrificial blood that was shed on Calvary. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they were to hate only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads mm -hmm. makes this conclusion even more inescapable. inescapable. Uh -huh. For only a true Christian, one who has a personal experience with God, a perfect knowledge of his word, and who is filled with his, with his spirit, can discriminate saint from sinner. Right. Uh -huh. He only can recognize who has the seal and who does not have it mm -hmm. when the latter is clogged in a counterfeit robe of righteousness. So this is what it is. Only those who have the seal of God or only those who are standing with this truth that God has given, holding the gospel message, know who are those that are in the bottomless pit. Mm -hmm. Know those who need the art our services. Mm -hmm. So even among Adventist brethren, there are people who are in the bottomless pit, enjoying in the prison house of sin. And our duty that God has given us is to open the bottomless pit for them. How? By providing the gospel word message. 
So this message of the feast and the statues and judgments, even of celebrating, for example, the feast of Tabernacles as we are doing today, is keeping the bottomless pit what open. Okay. So that their adventure, there are some that are there who are actually enjoying the dust of sin. They are awakened. They are agitated so that they come out from the bottomless what pit and be what and be saved. Now we want then to move on. You will find the, 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 the aspect that when, when they came out of the bottomless pit, there was a charge given to them. Eh? That they were to hate men for how long? For five months. Let's hear about that. Seeing that the locusts are symbolical of the followers. Seeing that the locusts are symbolical of the followers of Christ right. after the crucifixion, uh -huh. and that they were commanded not to resist their enemies mm -hmm. the five months, uh -huh. therefore began at that time. Right. Right. And seeing, furthermore, that death does not as yet free any man, but still reigns over all, the five months are in consequence figurative time. Mm -hmm. And extend from the crucifixion to a time when the death shall flee from some men, that is, to the time when some will be made invulnerable to death. So we see that from the crucifixion of Christ, going forward to a time when some shall be made invulnerable to death, mm -hmm. it is the period of the five months in which the locust should work hard to keep open the bottomless pit. pit. Mm -hmm. How? By hating the wicked with the message of the gospel. So you hear some say, you guys here, you, you are causing that type of division in the church. You are causing this and that. Now we no longer have freedom. Yeah, you tell them, no, that's the work which we does. That's the work of opening the bottomless pit. Why? We strike the wicked. The wicked should not have peace. I like someone who was making a lesson and saying, when you go among Adventists at the present time, according to Isaiah, you find that the church is filled with the prayers and thorns. So because you are going to such a people, what should you have? Should you have a matok? Oh. Eh? Not only a matok, a bond arrow. Because if you are not so, so much armed, they will hate you. Mm -hmm. So this is what these locusts are, are representing the Christians. We should keep open the bottomless pit. Meaning, you should have the necessary weapons to hate. How do we hate? We don't hate by, 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 by weapons, but we hate through the word of God, through the gospel. Mm. So the gospel message hates the devil and hates even the wicked ones, and therefore giving them no chance so that they are awakened uh, so that people are able to come out from the bottomless pit. So that's our duty. Uh, from the crucifixion of Christ up to today, God is saying we should keep open the bottomless pit by striking the wicked. Eh? And uh, you know how painful it is when you are told that you are wrong by this message and you find yourself that you are wrong. Yeah, It's very painful. Yeah. You can see even with what Jeroboam did, when he was told that what you are doing, Jeroboam, is bad. He said, get this man. And he wanted the man to be killed because it's very painful. But sure enough, the man of God had power until Jeroboam had what? To, to ask for the forgiveness of sin. So this period in which we are in, that's the period where we are hating the wicked, hating those who not have the seal of God. So as we continue to enjoy this feast, it's our duty to search for those that do not have this message and hate them. How do we hate them? Give them the gospel message so that they come out from the bottomless pit. Mm -hmm. So the message of statues and judgment must be agitated, must be spoken, if people are to come out from the bottomless pit. Otherwise, Kafa said, you know nothing if you don't know this truth. So Christ had to die. When he died, he gave us the message of the gospel with which he wants us to open the bottomless pit to keep it openly all the time. Just like this is similar to the lesson where it says, where, where it says the beast which he had a wound that did, uh, did live. Uh, you remember that of Revelation chapter 13, mm -hmm. which says the beast that had a, 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 one of the eight was wounded to death, mm -hmm. uh, but it lived. So, and you are saying, the Jew, why, why did that wound live? It was because people had to put down their weapons of, of wounding and hating the wicked. Mm -hmm. God says, no, don't put them down. Keep them on so that the wound is kept what? Open. Yes, the bottomless pit open for the people of God to escape. So we ask for God's power to proclaim his truths because they keep open the bottomless what? pit. 
Now, let's go on further. Uh, we have already talked about the issue of the hating in five months. Mm -hmm. Now, we really want to understand it in depth, how it starts from the days of Christ, moving through and through until we come to our time where we see again God giving us a covering that will keep again the bottomless pit open so that we can escape from the evil one. So we read in 2, 2, 2, sorry, 5 Tiara 74 paragraph 2. We say the fact that too that the trumpets uh -huh. the fact too that the trumpet are figurative is another evidence that these five months are figurative time. So these five months that we're talking about, they are men, they are figurative what time. Mm. Right? Uh -huh. But why should this period in which the locusts, that is the Christians, mm -hmm. have power to torment men be limited to five months? Yeah, that's the question. Mm. Uh -huh. It will be noted that the 144,000 are called the first fruits. Right. Denoting that they are sealed at the beginning of the harvest. Uh -huh. The commencement of the time to separate the taste from the wheat. Mm -hmm. To the parable of the harvest, then, you must go for the full explanation of the five months period. Right. So, now we really want to understand in depth this five months period. Eh? It's allocation according to what God has given. Right. Uh, let's hear in track number three in the harvest. Eh? Uh, do you see it? Track 5, page 74, paragraph 3. It okay. says, uh, the, in, in track number 3, the harvest time. harvest time. The harvest, the time from the baptism of Christ to the close of probation is shown to be illustrated by two figurative marks. So when we talk about God's calendar, which we now understand and we know, mm -hmm. it teaches us also of the close of probation. Mm -hmm. So from the time when probation started until it shall be uh, closed, it's, 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 it's equivalent to a symbolical day, which consists of how many hours? 12 hours. I'm sure if you can remember the same event that we also have uh, when we are talking about the, 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 the cause of Matthew chapter 20, mm -hmm. where we also have a day being symbolical of the period for probation or clauses. So let's hear how these 12 months are divided in this work of opening the bottomless pit, keeping the bottomless pit open, and until the five months are also expired. Mm -hmm. Let's hear. Six months. Six from Christ's baptism. Let me start it. Yes. The harvest, the time from the baptism of Christ to the close of probation, is shown to be illustrated by 12 figurative months. Right. Six from Christ's baptism to his crucifixion, uh -huh. five from the crucifixion to the ingathering of the first fruits, right. leaving one month for the ingathering of the second fruit, the great mortgage. I thought you would say, I mean, did you see the progress now? Amen. What does it say here? We have got six months from the baptism of Christ. Mm -hmm. Unto his what? Unto his what? Crucifixion. Unto his crucifixion. So for the period from where Christ started the ministry, which we shall consider also, to his crucifixion, we term it the what? The first six months. And this is the time in which Christ opened the bottomless what? Pit. Mm. When he opened the bottomless pit, accordingly, we have how many months? Five months mm -hmm. from the opening of the bottomless pit in which the wicked are hurt. So these five months, they stretch right through into what period? Into the period of the harvesting of the house of what? Israel, Israel. which are the first fruits. Mm -hmm. So we have got how many months there? Five months. Five months. Making how many months? Eleven what? Months. Mm -hmm. Therefore, living one more month. So this one more month is the one that then is committed to the ingathering, which you are symbolized by this Feast of Tabernacles as we are keeping it today, the ingathering of those that are not in the house of what? Of God. So this is how the, the, the parabolical day uh, is, is symbolized here or is used in the close of probation with the first six months from the time Christ uh, began his ministry uh, up until his death where he so even opened the bottomless pit. And then we also have then the five months from the death of Christ going through up until the close of probation or the, the, the harvesting of the house of what? Of God. And then we have one more month. Eh? So it's quite clear. Let us then understand these 11 months, which as we go with them to really understand how they go. So our first session is to find out what we term as the seed 
sowing. Eh? What? Seed what? Sowing. sowing. Because if you are to harvest something, if God is to harvest 144,000, it means there was a period for again, seed what? Sowing. sowing. Let's hear about that. Eh? This, this is tract number 3, page 54, paragraph 2. The seed sower. The seed sower, the seed, the field, the season of cultivation and growing, mm -hmm. and the season of harvest mm -hmm. must together be perfectly calculated to illustrate the spiritual kingdom. Right. Otherwise, the representation can only lead into error instead of into truth. Right. Uh -huh. Go ahead. The, the four seasons. The four seasons of the year all being required in completing the process of planting, uh -huh. raising, uh -huh. and harvesting the year's crops. So, this is the order that we have in a 12 month year. We have the process of planting first, raising two, and harvesting the crops. And mm -hmm. right. So this we need to also need to see in the spiritual realm and phase, right? Uh -huh. And autumn being the beginning of the agricultural year. So autumn in which we are now is the period of the beginning of the sowing time. So when we now would like to look unto Christ, uh, you know, I, I like this because it says. Uh, when people celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles, the toes of the New Year were not yet begun. Having enjoyed the Feast of, uh, of Pentecost, so the Feast of uh, Atonement, it means me and you, you can now have long-term plans because planting is a long-term plan. So the long-term plans can be now put in place. This is what even Christ did, as we shall see. When he was baptized, himself he was baptized during the Feast of Let's see. Let's see what the scripture says. Uh -huh. Quiet. Uh -huh. And autumn being the beginning of the agricultural year, right? Just at the close of the summer season, uh -huh. is the feast of in gathering, uh -huh. which is in the year of the end, in the end of the year, mm -hmm. when thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field. Mm -hmm. This parable, therefore, illustrates by the twelve months of the year a period of gospel history, mm -hmm. in the closing of which the kingdom of Christ is to be set up, right? And the beginning of which is sowing time. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure we, 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 we see what we are learning clearly here, that what happened. In the summer, it, it says here, uh, um, autumn being the beginning of the agricultural year, mm -hmm. the close of the summer season is the feast of in gathering, the feast that we are celebrating here, because the feast of time is also called the feast of in in gathering, mm -hmm. which is in the end of the year when thou have gathered in the lepers of the field. Mm -hmm. This parable therefore illustrates that by 12 months of the year, period of gospel. So 12 months of the year, a period of gospel history, the closing of which Christ, Christ is to set up, uh, to set up, sorry, of which, of which the kingdom of Christ will be set up, the beginning of which is the sowing one time. So I'm saying, when you follow this order, we follow this time of the autumn. We follow what God has said. We really understand that this, the time of the autumn, is the period of sowing the seed. Amen. So if you would like to sow seed, or if you would like to put up long-term plans with God, this is the period. Because at this period is the period when our sins have been won forgiven. And this is what God also, how he started his ministry. So Christ did not start the planting in March. No. Neither did he start the planting in April. No. Neither did he start the, 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 the planting in, in any other months of the year. Except on the months that are given by scripture. And what are the months? It is the month of the the, 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 the seventh month of the uh, gospel uh, year or the beginning of the agricultural year, which is the time for the feast of what? Tepa Nekos. That's the time for the sowing time. So as we shall see, Christ began his ministry. Uh, he began to be baptized during the feast of Tepa Nekos. Amen. Right. Having clearly said these events, I'm sure we're, 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 we're moving with them quite clearly. Uh, that when Christ opened the bottomless pit, it was within the period of sowing. Yeah. Uh, because the scripture, according to Matthew 13, verse 37, says, him, he, he that soweth the good seed, says Christ, is the son of man. And the enemy sowed the test. The enemy that sowed the test is the devil. So that means we have Christ first beginning his sowing time. When he began the sowing time by which he opened the bottomless pit, he 
purpose that the bottomless pit should be kept what? Open. Up until which time? He wanted it to be kept open until the harvest what? Time. But you will see that according to myth, there is an event where the devil also is sowing the what? The seed. The death. Meaning, somehow along the period of time, the people who have been given this ministry to keep open the work of God, they sleep and slumber. Mm -hmm. And thus allow the devil to shut them in, in the bottomless pit. So this is a danger of sleeping. When you have a message or the gospel, <laughs> if you sleep holding the keys in your hands, yeah. you know, <laughs> it's just very terrible. So this is what the devil knows, that if we have this message of the gospel, you should not sleep because you are continuously opening the bottomless what? pit, keeping it open. The devil tries by all means to snatch away the bottom, the, 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 the key. And what, so this is what he, saw, he did, because in the history of the time, there was the time in which then the tears were sought, which is then the five-month period. Because I've seen the six-month period takes us to the crucifixion of Christ. So the five months period in which God wanted the locusts to hit them, those who do not have the seal of God, the people, the, 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 the people of God somehow failed. And then they allowed the devil to, to, to sow see his seed amongst the locusts or amongst the, 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 the followers of Christ. So that these followers of Christ, they don't have power and strength to actually do the hating part. They are weakened. Eh? When, you, when the flood, when the briars and the thorns are in the midst of the church, those who are supposed to give the truth, they are just weakened because we know that the tears grow taller than the wheat. That's what really happens. That's what you, now we find out when, you, when the message comes, God has given us the message we shall see in the time of the harvest. This message does not have power to the people. It, it actually reaches to the people because the tears are there blocking. So, the people of God, 340,000, they are choked. That's why there is a need of then the Elijah's message to open the bottomless pit. When the bottomless pit is opened, then we shall know that then the people of God, they will not only then hate, but they will have ability even to destroy. Yeah, I guess quiet and see what it says there. Yeah, the period, there, there being a period, there being a period of church history illustrated by this 12 month harvest period, uh -huh. we must therefore find the time of its beginning, uh -huh. the time of seed sowing, right. the time of its closing, the time of reaping. So, generally, the time of seed sowing, when did it begin? Right, let's go to uh, tract uh, 3, page 56.3. As his ministry, as his ministry, his sowing of the good seed. The truth began right after his baptism. Right. So when did the sowing begin? As we have seen, right after his word baptism. Mm -hmm. So right on time. And when was he baptized? We shall see. Let's go ahead. Uh -huh. Therefore, to establish the beginning of the parabolic harvest period, mm -hmm. we must ascertain the date he was baptized. So we also need to know the date in which Christ was what? Baptized. Was baptized. Mm -hmm. Right? Let's go ahead. Uh -huh. And after well, which prophecy are we going to use to know this date? It is the prophecy of Revelation chapter what? So man of Daniel chapter 9. It gives us the us to have an idea and to even know, like I was saying, Christ was baptized in the Feast of Tabernacles. How did we know that? It is through this work of the seed sowing. Christ really knew when to see, put the seed down. It was in this time. Which he himself gave. So let's understand that from the prophets of Daniel chapter 9. <laughs> what does the prophet say? Uh -huh. And after three score and two weeks, right? Prophesied Daniel uh -huh. concerning Christ's ministry and his death. Right. Shall my side be cut off, uh -huh. but not for himself. And he shall confirm the covenant with men for one week. Uh -huh. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. So we, we understand and we know this prophecy. We will not go back to it because these are prophecies that are done even among the Adventists. Where this prophecy shows about 
the death of the, the, the prophecy that is nested within the 2300 days eh, prophecy. So we understand, we know that it shows this prophecy was to show about the, 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 the coming of Christ and his death. And we are told that Christ was to be here on earth for how many years? For three and a half what? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then in the midst of the week, which is three and a half years, he was to be cut off. Maybe just to, 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 to give a glimpse of what we mean by that. Let's go to uh, that this prophetic time reckoned by. Uh -huh. That this prophetic time reckoned by the year day rule uh -huh. of Ezekiel 4 verse 6. Right. Is seen from the fact that there were seven years from the time Christ was baptized yes. to the time the apostles were permitted to take the gospel to the Gentiles. Yes. So if you were to read three and through, you then understand that Christ was to confirm a covenant in one week and the meetings of the week, he was to what to be cut off. <laughs> one week is seven days, which according to Ezekiel prophecy represented how many years? Seven what? Yes. So three, half of seven years is three and a half years. So that implies that Christ was here or Christ worked or when from the time he began to, to the seed sowing until his death, which we have equated to a period of uh, uh, that period was three and a half years mm -hmm. or meters of the week, eh? which we see that once we know that it was three and a half years, what then we need to know is the time in which Christ was what? Was crucified. Mm. Once we know the time in which Christ was crucified, we are able also to know when he was baptized. Because from the time he began to preach or do the seed sowing to the time in which he died, there were three and a half what? Yes. Now let's go ahead. Eh? <clears throat> what I know it says, uh, uh, the fact having been established, right? The fact has yes, been established uh -huh. uh, that the three and a half years of Christ's ministry terminated on the skidding day of the first month. Right. Then counting three and a half years, uh -huh. um, we find that his baptism took place on the skidding day of the seventh month. Right. Which was in the week of Tabernacles. Uh -huh. And the celebration of which was the end of the agriculture year, right. the close of the harvest. Uh, 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 so interesting, brethren, that even heaven followed these appointed what times Amen. in the opening of the bottomless pit. Because this bottomless pit, as Christ was opening, we said it is the gospel. So he, Christ could not be going this direction and the fist going that direction. As we see those who are changing times and laws. Eh? So what are we finding here? His death was on the 16th of, of what? Of Nisan. That's a, that, that's a lesson which you can find and learn even the three days and three nights uh, lesson which Christ gave. Eh? We find that his death was on the 16th of Nisan because he took the Passover after taking the Passover on the 14th of the evening then on the 15th, he was held from judgment throne, of, 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 from Caiaphas to judgment throne, and from judgment throne to Pilate, from Pilate to where? To Herod, and from Herod back to Pilate. All that took a period of almost a day. And then on the third hour, he was nailed on the cross. Sixth hour, the sign that bottomless pit was opened, there was darkness all over the world, the land, according to Revelations. And then up until the ninth hour, where the, he confirmed the, 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 the aspect of opening the bottomless pit. And we are saying that was on the 16th of Nisan. Being 16th of Nisan, which means that now we can know then when did the three and a half years begin. Because we are going to say half of, we are going to add backwards the three years. So we say from the 16th of Nisan, Right? Mm -hmm. We add another year back. It will take us again to a 16 again of what? Of Nissan backwards. And mm -hmm. another foot 16 of Nissan backwards. Another foot 16 of Nissan backwards. Eh? Then the half part. So when we now return, we count backwards the half part, it takes us back to the Feast of Tabernacles on the 16th day. Christ was baptized. Today is the which day of the Feast of Tabernacles? It's the second day of the Feast of the Tabernacles, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Being the second day of the Feast of the Tabernacles, this is the very day in which Christ was baptized. Amen. So that he began the work of opening the bottomless pit. Brethren, mm -hmm. you see how important it is to follow the gospel because we have got the key 
key in which we are able to tell the movements of Christ, his actions, not only then, but even the actions that he's doing even at the present time, as he is completing the work of opening the bottomless pit so that the devil may be shut in the bottomless pit. Amen. And the saints of God are delivered and they are made ready to be in the kingdom of God. Of God. So what is an what an honor? Let's hear what inspiration continues to say there. <laughs> thus we see that the parable. Thus we see that the parable is imperfect to daily to nature. Right. And that the Son of Man commands sowing the spiritual seed right on time. Right. In the end of the old and in the beginning of the new year's harvest. So Christ was on time. So those who say, hey, it doesn't matter. Uh, whether whether the feast has been kept on the fifth day of the seventh month, any time we want to keep it, we can do it. They don't know. They don't know Christ, and it's a sign that they don't have the key of the bottomless pit. Hmm. That's why they play around in the bottomless pit with the devil. For if they had the keys, they will know that Christ was precise even to an extent of starting to sow the seed. He started in the agriculture week, beginning of the agriculture year. The exact time that inspiration has said. And do you think the harvest time which you are approaching uh, will just take place randomly? No. 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 It will move according to the way. That's why when we, when we are living in this very time in which we are in, we know that we need to be keeping the times as they are given by God in their seasons. For the key to the bottomless pit that Christ has given us allows us to follow him step by step so that we can escape the workings of the evil one. Mm. Why were the Jews shut in the bottomless pit in the, day, in the first advent? It's because there came a time that their eyes were taken off Christ. Then they were not, otherwise, how, how were their eyes taken off Christ? They were taken off the gospel that was given in Leviticus. As a result, they were not able to track the events of what? Of Christ. Thus, they were shut in the bottomless pit. That should not happen now. We're not in the end of the world. Of the world. So then the next event, definitely, brethren, that then we do have will be, maybe just finish up where you're reading there. With the sowing of the seed, beginning with the Christ baptism, uh -huh. and the harvest coming at the end of the world, right. the period of the parable obviously embraces the end of gospel dispensation. Uh -huh. From the beginning of Christ's ministry to the close of probational time. So that's the parable of Matthew chapter 13, where it talks about what? The sower that went on to sow. And then when the sower it went on to sow, the, there was the slumbering part, where uh, there was a sleeping part of the watchman, who was supposed to keep open the bottom of the speed. And then the devil sought his own seat, who then neutralized the ability of these locusts or the followers of Christ to hit. When he did that, then Christ said, wait for the five months. So when the five months are about to be finished, then what we know? We are in the period of the harvest for the church of God. So the growing time or the tail growing period, we know is the time after his death, uh, after the death of the apostles, even up to today. This is why the church of God is infiltrated with people who do not want to keep the feast of God, but who claim to be following Christ. People who enjoy keeping the pagan feast. People who attempt prayers and thorns. Why? Because their behavior, they don't enjoy, enjoy holding the key that opens the bottom of the spirit. They want to enjoy their sins and die in their sins. Yet God is saying, I have given you the key to the bottomless pit. So that's the sowing time. And you can see that already as we are in the churches, we shall learn in another lesson in the midst of the week, the church is already filled with the flood of the devil. Why? Because there was a slipping of the watchmen. Watchmen did not put their eyes on the truth. Like in 1844, God put us in place the trangious messages. He expected us to uh, keep our eyes on the trangious messages. Yes, keep open the word the bottomless pit, and therefore be prepared to partake of the extra messages. What did the people do in 1844? They slumbered and slept. Mm -hmm. And as a result, the church is filled with prayers and thoughts. The church is filled with the flood of the woman who is ensuring that the, uh, the, 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 the people of God or the proper people of God can't hate 
the what? The, 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 the wicked proper in the church. When you try to rebuke sin, because we hate through the gospel, they are there say, no, 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 don't worry. They, they are okay. It doesn't matter. No, no. When, when we say, no, 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 let's keep the coming, there's no, don't worry. Why? They are not the people of God. They are there to neutralize the ability of the locust to do the hating in the five months, which the hating period we have said is the period of keeping open the bottomless pit. If you don't know this truth, Kaiva said you know nothing. Because this is the main truth that we know that this earth can only be kept open for the salvation of men if we continue with the gospel of truth. Now, uh, we want then, having said all that, uh, we, have, we can learn about the, what is happening even in the church. We have done the lessons more and more. But our main focal or our thrust then is to understand the, 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 the timing or the tears within Laodiceanism. Uh, because we have seen that the tears came into the church from the, after the death of the, word of the apostles. Eh? And even change times and laws during the dark ages, showing how much the devil went on to take the, the, the what he knew that by changing times and laws, he is taking away the key of the gospel. And his people will be shut in what? In the bottom of the spirit. They die with him. Now let's see uh, 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 that aspect here. Uh, uh, this is uh, tract, are you there? Tract three, page sixty one, paragraph three. As the period since the passing of the apostles has been the wheat and take row in time. Yes, 61.3. Mm -hmm. As the period since the passing of the tears, or passing of the apostles has been the wheat and the take row in time. I see. Mm -hmm. 61 paragraph 3. 61 paragraph 3. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. As the, as the period since the passing of the apostles has been the wheat and take growing time, right? And as moreover, the Laodicean church is the last of the seven sections of the Christian church in which are commingled the wheat and the tares. We must learn the answer to the question, right? So, this is the time the Laodicean church, which is the Adventist church now, mm -hmm. is the last to be commingled, meaning it is the last to be having the wheat and what and tares in their midst. Mm -hmm. They are growing within the church, right. The names of the seven churches. The names of the seven churches represent the successive sections of the Christian church. Right. Of which the Laodicean is the last. Uh -huh. Are not just names. They are not just names. Hmm. Those seven churches which we have, the Laodicean name, the Laodicean church, uh, all the churches of Revelation chapter 1, mm -hmm. uh, and chapter 2, as well as part of chapter 3. Uh -huh. Let's go ahead. Take as a familiar example the name of the schist. Philadelphia. Right. It's meaning uh -huh. rather love. So when you talk about the, 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 the first Adventists, they were told to have what is called brotherly love. Uh -huh. being, being, uh -huh. being a misnomer uh -huh. of the spiritual condition of any other church organization in the end of Christian era mm -hmm. implicitly fits, however, the state of charity common and singular to this kist, the Millerite church. So the Millerite church, there is no other church like it. Mm -hmm. Which was? So this Miller church was called a brother love church, which was called Philadelphia, which was the sixth. Mm -hmm. So the church then that emerged from then, which was as a result of the third angel's message, the Adventist church. What then it was then called what? Uh -huh. When the proclamation? When the proclamation of the 2300 days of Daniel 8, verse 14, uh -huh. sounded to the churches prior to 1844, they arbitrarily denied their members the right of religious freedom uh -huh. by forbidding them even to attend Miller's preaching right. and by casting out those who accepted the message. Uh -huh. Then after 1844, these same religious bodies opposed the preaching of the three angels' messages. Right. Again, taking the same tyrannical actions against their free-minded brethren, mm -hmm. the Millerite Church, by its actions, in contrast to their said, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Mm. And let us not interpose between God and his people by making religious laws or by prohibiting the free exercise of so any that's, that's why it was called the Philadelphia Brother Love. Amen. They understood where Adventists came from. Mm. They, it, it came from a people who knew that they did not need to interpose between God and his people. They allowed people to make their decisions. But what is said not that Laodicean is depressed down to 
because of the presence of the tears within them. They no longer allow for, 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 for men to, to, to actually have a free choice of his own conscience. What do they say? Don't listen to the fourth angel's message. Mm -hmm. Don't listen to the fifth angel's message. The question is asked, you guys, you don't know where you came from. You came from the Philadelphian church. Mm -hmm. The church that allowed you to have a freedom of choice. So you, the Laudation, why has the Laudation grown so bad? It's because of the tears that they are growing in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. Why? Because when the Adventist pioneers passed away, then the devil gets put in more and more of the what of the tears. This is why we see they rejected the gospel message in 1988. Why? Because they the devil knew that if that gospel message was received, the bottomless pit was going to be wide open. So he made sure that people do not receive that message. And as a result, you know what happened. We lost so much. But thanks God, because as we shall come to the harvest time, we will see that God has made a way that the bottomless pit be kept what? Open. And therefore, we can agitate, agitate. Keep the peace of the Lord. Keep the, 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 the appointed times. Let's walk and prepare for the kingdom. These are the agitation that we are doing. We are opening the bottomless pit that the devil has tried to shut in. In another term, it says that we are continually wounding fresh the head that seemed to have healed. Mm. We wound it continuously with the message. That's all good. For the bottomless pit was opened by Christ. And it must be copped open until Christ shall shut in the devil mm. at the 1,000 years. Where you put all the sins and what a joy we'll have in another in another type of untypical feast of tabernacles when we celebrate that the devil has been shut in the bottomless one pit with his sins and together with those who have chosen him. Now, can we just have a, a so after when the Laudation period ends, the aspect that we have are these angels' messages, eh? Two extra messages. What are their work? Uh -huh. Can you go to uh, next that uh, paragraph two it says the end of the period in which the wheat uh -huh. the end of the period in which the wheat and the tears are coming out is the time of the closing work for the Laudation Church. So this is called the closing work for the Laudation, Laudation Church, mm -hmm. right? Uh -huh. This work, this work is identified by the church's founder as the marking in Ezekiel nine, right? The sealing of spiritual Israel, uh -huh. forty four thousand. So this is the closing work which we have here, brethren. The two angels' messages. It is the work of sealing the hundred and forty four thousand, yeah? which is the happens in the termination of the five months. Mm -hmm. After this, the sealing is over. The termination of the five months is is, is completed. Then there will be a destruction of the tears. Huh? Why? Because we have moved from the phase of the locust hating, but to a phase when we now have the horses that are breathing fire and brimstone. Huh? And therefore destroying the enemies. And this is what it's, it's getting to. Yeah? Then the church or oh, those that are of the devil that have been infused into the church, the chairs, the tears. They will be removed and the bottomless pit will be kept wide open so that even the Gentiles, the second fruits, within the last symbolical one month, they are brought in and gathered for the kingdom. This is what we're fighting for. So as we continue to work in this truth, work for the close and work for the church, let's agitate and agitate, brethren. It's time for God is opening wide the bottomless pit and soon will throw in the tears right into the boat, into the pit and deliver his what? His people. <laughs> Quiet. And this identification is conclusively substantiated by the fact, as here in sin, mm -hmm. that Ezekiel's prophet is a separation of two classes. Right. Those who sigh and cry for all the domination that be done in the midst thereof, uh -huh. that is the church, right. and those who do not. Right. So that's quite clear. So we've seen that we are in this period of the harvest. Where the harvest, according to Matthew, is done by who? Let's read Matthew chapter uh, 66, paragraph 3. The comment on Matthew chapter 13, verse 39. Who is doing the harvesting at this particular time? Uh -huh. 
The reapers are the angels mm -hmm. who shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just. Right. These angels are not those who shall come with Christ at the second coming, right. uh -huh. but rather those whom we shall send forth. Uh -huh. They are like the three angels of Revelation 14, verse 6 to 11. I don't know whether you get that, brethren. Mm -hmm. When we are in the harvest time, we have Petharation Church, which was the first, second, third angels message. Mm -hmm. Then we saw that with progress of time, there was a sleeping within the church. Mm -hmm. Then the sleeping the church resulted in the church being filled with every form of tear, which now we can think of in the midst of the church, doing all the evils that they are doing, which also makes the sense of God to sigh and cry for the abominations that are being done by these tears, and then they are sealed. But we are saying, this the time in which then they are being sealed, the people of God, is the harvest time. But in this harvest time, there is the work of the reapers. The reapers is done by angels, not the angels like in heaven, but the angels are like those. It's not the three angels' messages. That's what the scripture is saying. They are like the three angels. Did you get not? Meaning it's not the three angels' message. But what are they? It is these two additional angels' messages in the harvest time that are, what? are doing the work of what? Of harvest. Indeed, the third angel. Uh -huh. Indeed, the third angel is to select the wheat from the test and seal or bind mm -hmm. the wheat for, for the heavenly Ghana. Right. Therefore, the angels, uh -huh. the reapers, uh -huh. whom Christ sends forth, include both him who does the sealing uh -huh. or binding uh -huh. and those who fall on to do the destroying. Right. First in the church, then in the world. That is the separation in two phases. So these are the angels that are doing the, the work. Huh? We will see it in another time, but that's that's those are the angels that are doing the, the excellent work of reaping. Right. <laughs> so this is what I've been talking about. This aspect, which is very, very interesting, that we've come to, where we have these two additional angels. So this is where I, 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 our topic was hindering, that it is the covering eh? that keeps the bottomless pit what? Okay. Open. These two additional angels, places, they provide a covering for us. As we shall see how this covering is provided to us. And when they do provide this covering, me and you keep the bottomless pit what? open. Okay. Or keep the wound of the devil being open. Wounding the, that year which was wounded to death, we wound it to death completely. So that the, when the pit is open, the saints of God are delivered. That's what they are. You see, they, are, they have this part, brother, how it's going. We have the bottomless pit, which is this earth, where the Adventists have been buried in there by the tears. We have shut in the door and closed the message of the gospel and said, shall not hear anything. But God is saying, don't worry, I may have given the gospel. Remember, what is the key? What is the key? It is the gospel. Mm -hmm. Ellen White did not have the gospel here. It was the trenches versus the Ten Commandments. But the gospel is given to these two additional messages. Why? Because they come at a time when Adventism is in the bottomless pit. So in this bottomless pit, what do the gospel do? By these messages that we are learning, we are opening the bottomless what? pit. So that the 144,000 or the people of God within can be rescued by the work of sealing. So as we are doing this, what are we doing? We are doing the reaping part. What are we doing? Reaping from the bottomless pit. pit. When the reaping is complete from the bottomless pit, comes the nice part, brethren. What's the nice part? Then it will be that the tears must be shut in the bottomless what? pit. And then they are worth to be destroyed by the sort of Ezekiel chapter 9 and condemned for second what? Death. So that's why because let both grow together. Where are they growing? In the bottomless pit. And we're shut by the devil in the bottomless pit. Up until which time? Up until I send my reapers who are having the gospel message. The faith of Jesus, which is the key that opens the bottomless pit. These they then open the bottomless pit. So what an honor is this message that God has given us? It is the message that opens the bottomless pit. 
Yet at the same time, it provides a covering for those that are rescued from the bottomless pit. Now, let's hear that uh, from letter one, page eight. Uh, letter one, page eight. <laughs> After leaving. After leaving Isaiah 11, verse 1, right. our attention was called to the chart of God's traveling throne uh -huh. that Ezekiel saw in vision. So, we, this is where we are when we are talking about these events. Remember, when we talk about the third angel's message, which throne do we talk about? Which throne do we talk about? The stationary throne of judgment, mm -hmm. which we have seen in Revelation chapter 4, which was cast. But when we move to the reaping aspect, when we are delivering people from the bottomless pit, Christ moves, come down with the message of the traveling what? Throne. Mm -hmm. Because the work is no longer limited in heaven, but the work is now a right on what? On earth. So there must be some movement, and that movement is through the traveling throne of Ezekiel chapter 1. Let's hear more there. They point it out. They pointed out that the living creatures were not fully clothed. Right. As they did, as they did not have on shoes, and their heads are uncovered. So when you go to, 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 to Ezekiel chapter 1 prophecy, here I'm now picking the cream. Because as what we are told, that because of the abundance of the milk, mm -hmm. then we shall pick what? Cream. So I'm just picking the cream of this of that lesson. So what is the cream? When you go to Ezekiel chapter 1, you find that there are creatures which I, Ezekiel saw, which were moving, causing the throne of God to, 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 to travel. These creatures, when he saw them, he could see their feet. Huh? Yeah, because he described their feet. And he even also described their head. One had the head of a lion, the head of a eagle, the head of a cow. So he was able to describe their heads. Meaning, these creatures, when he first saw them, they were not fully covered. Were they? No. Because he could see their faces. He could see their feet. Right, let's go ahead. Whereas they explained, uh -huh. Isaiah saw the same chariot right. and the creatures fully clothed with the feet and face covered. So, now, to, 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 I will move on together, brethren. So, in 1844, we don't talk about the traveling what, throne. Mm -hmm. Because in 1844, we talk about the administrative throne, as Eleanor was given. Mm -hmm. So, Christ entered into the most holy place. And judgment of the dead began. But when we now then move to the aspect when we are now opening the bottomless pit within Adventism and delivering the first fruits there, then we talk about the traveling throne. Mm -hmm. But the traveling throne that we start with is the traveling throne shown to Ezekiel chapter 1, which equates to this period, the fourth angel's message. So at the period of the fourth angel's message, what's happening? The, the creatures are not fully covered mm -hmm. eh? because their feet could be seen and their head could be seen but when the throne comes at the time which we are here the time of Revelation chapter 18 the time of the fifth angel's message then you cannot see the eyes huh? you cannot see even the feet neither can you see the board the creatures are fully covered as it was shown in Isaiah chapter 6 the seraphims so at this point, God expects us to have reached the level of the seraphims. That we have that ability to shut in the devil in the bottomless pit, open the bottomless pit, and rescue the people of God. Yeah, that's the power that he expects us to have. And that's what he's given us at this present time with the message of the gospel. And why? Because now we are fully covered. That's the covering that we're talking about. We have a cover that cover our eyes, cover our body, cover our feet. That's the word. This is why I say, if the people of God were to go into the time of trouble in this time of Illinois, they will be consumed because they don't have a covering. Yeah. Even in the days of whatever, their feet and their legs will be consumed because they could still be seen. But it is only when we are in the seraph seraphim period, which we are in now, that we can enter into the time of trouble without getting hurt. Why? Because our bodies are fully covered. Covered by what? Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. Whereas, um, whereas they explained, I saw Isaiah saw the same chariot and creatures fully clothed with the feet and face covered. Right. Not this uh -huh. only, but the creatures have been changed to, to seraphims. Right. 
So from 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 the fourth angel's message, we move from cherubims to a seraphim. Seraphims. Right? <laughs> The living creatures of Ezekiel 1 represent the 144,000 living saints. Right. Do you see that those living creatures, at first stage, as they are seen here, they are representing the 144,000 mm -hmm. who are in the bottomless pit. Right. Whom we say, these messages come to rescue them from the bottomless pit. Up in the bottomless pit. <laughs> and as the living creatures have only four wings, right? two wings are to fly, or as John saw, Three angels flying in the midst of heaven. So these ones were flying in the midst of heaven. They were having how many wings? How many wings? Two wings. Two wings. Mm -hmm. What were those two wings? Uh -huh. The two flying wings are therefore comparable to the Sabbath and sanctuary cloth. So these ones, 1844, they were only having how many wings, brethren? Two wings. Mm -hmm. So they were not covered at all. They are just having Sabbath and sanctuary what? Truth. But when they came in 18 what? 1929, the fourth angel's message, they had added how many wings? Quiet. Uh -huh. In other words, righteousness by grace supplied during infants, right? the first stage of Christian growth, the message of 1844, a twofold message. So this message of 1844 is a message of infants. That's what they were having by then. <laughs> That's when, quiet. when the living creatures arrived in 1929, right, they had added two more wings covering uh -huh. the board. So in 1929, this is why when read the 1929 message, we are only covering the what now? The board. But let's talk about the head. Was it covered, right? <laughs> quiet. The infant of 1844 had grown into a youth. Yeah. Eating strong meat, right? Meat in juices and uh -huh. the message of the purification of the church and setting up of the kingdom a twofold message, right? Uh -huh. Righteousness by faith uh -huh. imputed, right? So this is what the message was: 1844, righteousness by grace; 1840, 1929, righteousness by faith imputed. Two additional wings have been added. So we started with how many wings? Two wings. That's an infant. Yeah? An infant can actually walk. In the street and clothes and doesn't even care. Mm. But can a youth do so? The youth needs some covering of the body. Mm. But when we come to maturity stage, then we have the full body covered. Covered gear. Mm. And when we have this covered, covering gear, we open the bottomless pit easily without the devil being able to hit us. Why? Because we now have the full spectrum of the key. The gospel. So this is the covering, brethren. The covering that gives us the essence of what? Of Christ. Right? Let's go ahead. Uh -huh. the, the next time. Yes. The next time the chariot arrives, the living creatures are changed to seraphims. Right. Uh -huh. And they've added two wings. Uh -huh. Righteousness of Christ imparted uh -huh. a full grown Christian. Right. A twofold message. So do you see how we are? Two wings here, mm -hmm. that's 1844 message. Two wings there, that's 19, 1929, we're now covering the body. Mm -hmm. Two additional wings here, what then do we have? We are at a maturity, what, what? Stage. And at that maturity stage, this is where we are now having, we are fully covered with the truth, the fullness of the gospel. So when we have the fullness of the gospel, it means we have got the key that unlocks the bottomless pit in its entirety. Yes, today we are enjoying the Feast of what? Tabernacles. Otherwise, we couldn't enjoy it. Why now we enjoy it? We have opened the bottomless pit and our sins have been transferred to the heavenly sanctuary and have been even blotted out. Yes, we have a right to enjoy this feast. Right. Uh, can you go ahead. Uh -huh. The day the child arrives, a nation is born. Right. So, when we are in here, we were born a nation. That of 4,000 will be rescued at once. And this is what is happening now. God is working that part. So, go ahead. <laughs> no more names of sinners will be placed on the books of Judah. Right. Behold, upon the mountains, the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, uh -huh. that publisheth peace. O Judah, keep thy sovereign feasts perform thy vows. Right. For the wicked shall no more pass through thee. He is cut, cut off. Uh -huh. Furthermore, Furthermore, the names of sinners that are on the books will be removed, 
a pure church from then and throughout eternity. Mm -hmm. This was the manner in which... All right. So this is quite clear, brethren. We have seen what the covering is. First of all, we are just flying with two wings when we were just uh, started in 1844 with Ellen White. So we're infants. Could, could go around uh, and clothe. And God tried to clothe us in 1888 with all the spectrum of the message, but we refused the clothing because we're still infants and went into our clothing. Yeah? And therefore the devil shut us in the bottomless what? pit. Then God said, no, if people are now in the bottomless pit like this, I need to add two additional angels. First, I will add the cherubims. First, send the cherubims. 1929 message, cherubim message. Then God said, no, right. They are still there. Then God has sent the seraphim message. When you talk of a seraphim, this is why you talk about the angel of Revelation chapter When it touched down, the whole earth was lightened with God's glory. Why? Because this message is a seraphim message. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Compare it if you want to see the seraphim message. Swift, because seraphim are the most swift. The, the, it is the highest order, the highest rank of what of angels who execute. The missions of God so quick, lightning speed. Check the 1888 message. They will have to wait for both for missionaries to go here and there. 1929, here, letters here and there. But check the seraphim message, PSM TV now. It's just a click of the pattern. It's all over the world. For it is in a seraphim period. We are now fully clothed against the obstacles and hindrances that were ensuring that the message does not go. But now, God clears those. Just a click of the pattern. You hear the message. Whether you are in your home, as long as you have got network, whether you are in your hole, where, wherever you might be, you are in the bottom of the sea, it catches you because it is the seraphim message. The covering. Why? The full spectrum of the key that opens the bottom is what? Pit. He has been granted to the fifth angel's message. And this is the time in which you are. Let's use the time, brethren. Um, now, uh, in closing, let's just hear this one. During the five months, track 5774, paragraph 4. During the five months, the locusts were commanded to torment those who had not the seal of God, but not to kill them. Right? So, from the time we have heard this message, uh, from the days of Christ, where Christ was, we saw that the death of Christ up to the time hundred of thousand are being sealed at the present time. That's the five-month period. So in these five-month periods, we are being told that we only hate through the truth. We don't kill. That's what we're doing even now. But let's go ahead. Huh? This command implies that after the expiration of this period, right. the killing restriction will cease. So the next thing once propagation then closes. The killing expiration what? Ceases. And then we'll begin to kill. They'll begin to kill. These angels' messages, they'll begin to kill. Yes, they'll have the slaughter of Ezekiel chapter 9. This is why in another prophecy which you have not studied today, these angels are seen being four, eh? being four uh, in Revelation chapter 7, eh? having waiting weapons. And then when the fifth one lays down in Revelation Ezekiel chapter 9, they are now men fifth having hating weapons. And then the sixth, sixth angel... Six, the men in linen having what? Writers in court. These angels, once they finish the period of sealing the 104,000, because we're saying the sealing of 104,000 is, is what ends which period, brethren? The period of the five months. Once the 104,000 are sealed, probation closes. Those five angels' messages, which were simply hating all along with the truth, will tend now to destroy. Why? Because they will need to destroy the tears so that the 104,000 are left clean and clear for the kingdom so that they can also carry forward which work the work of 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 delivering the second fruits from the bottomless piece using the seraphim message which they will have uh -huh. quiet just miss that one. this command implies that after the expiration of this period the killing restriction will cease and that from then on the wicked will be killed rather than terminated only yeah uh -huh. At that time, the four angels of Revelation 9, verse 15, yes. will have prepared themselves for to slay the third part of them. So that's the period that is coming next, where we now have the four angels ready to slay. Once we 
finish this work of sealing. So we're in the fifth, five, five months, almost completing them. And we knew if this the day of atonement was the final one, then we knew that the next thing that comes is then the wicked are destroyed. Mm. We're able to destroy now the wicked. Eh? Yes, the judgments of God, which awakes them. But now we are simply using the message to head. Mm. Eh? And therefore open the bottomless pit. Right. After the expiration. Uh -huh. Down after the expiration. After the expiration of the five figurative month of restriction, uh -huh. during which they were to not to kill, some will be made invulnerable to death for the finishing of the gospel work. Right. Uh -huh. And will, if necessary, to the discharging of their responsibility, be. Um, right. So we see that once the probation closes, the five months end, their wife ship will be made invulnerable to death, as well as the 144,000. Yes, the seed is a permit. Which is said it give us eternal what? life. Mm. So once that we have, then we're invulnerable to death. So that we can discharge the duties anyway, anyhow, without fear. If you come with your sword, you can't hit us. If you come with that, we can why? Because the five months are, are expired. And it is now the time for us to discharge the duties in delivering the second fruits from the bottomless pit. Uh, finally, the experience of Christ's first disciples. The experience of Christ's first disciples. Maybe said in those days shall men seek death. Eh? And in those days shall men seek death and mm -hmm. shall not find it. Right. And shall desire to die and death shall flee. So once the profession closes on one of these atonements, brethren, and we made it, we shall seek death and we shall not find it. How do we seek death? By proclaiming this truth. Because the devil wants to, to take away this key that opens the bottomless pit and is ready to kill us. But he can't. For men shall seek death. And they will yeah. not find them. For death shall flee from them. Yeah. So this is the services that we are having under the seraphim message or the fifth angel's message that death must flee from us. Right? The experience of eh? the experience of Christ's first disciples will explain why that after the expiration of the five months, men will desire to die but cannot. Yeah. Despite great persecution against the faithful of the primitive Christian church, mm -hmm. their vision of the world's great need urged them not only to preach the gospel of Christ at the cost of their lives. Right. So, well, to try and maintain and keep the bottomless pit open, the apostles had to preach it at the cost of their lives. lives. It's not easy, brethren, to keep the bottomless pit. This is why when we hear this message and you all do it, you are persecuted by almost everyone, your family, your friends, the church, everyone. Because the devil knows that you have opened the bottomless what? Pit. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they are able now to, 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 to be delivered. So whenever the time will come, when now, whenever we will do that and the devil will try to kill us, but he will not. Just like now, he tries to kill us, but he is not able. Uh -huh. And not with his standing crossed death awaiting them, mm. they, in faith and courage in God, held the light of the gospel before the people mm. as constantly as the sun holds its rays over the earth. So this is what the apostles did. And God expects us now to do that when he has given us this final what? Message. The message of the seraphic period, which we say this is the period where God is saying we are now like seraphims. We are fully covered. Covered with truth covered against the time of trouble, covered even against the devil, the devil can try to kill us, but he can't. Covered even against anything uh, so that we keep the bottomless pit open. Eh? And the people of God are delivered from the bottomless pit and brought into the kingdom of what? Of God. May the Lord bless us and enable us to continue to enjoy this feast of tabernacles as we enjoy more and more of these truths that enable us to keep the bottomless pit open as we are fully covered as the seraphims are by the two first the, 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 the two wings of the third angel's message and the additional wings of the fourth and the additional wings of the fifth which gives us how many wings six angels as the seraphims are so that we are people who are in honor to god may god bless us all and may we have a, a wonderful blessed feast <laughs>